Hello everyone and welcome back to another day of Gardening in the Video. We're working with Claude today out here in the garage. We kind of set up a little little temporary workstation where it's shady in here where it's hot out there. We're doing some work in here. Tell me what you're doing Claude. Well, uh, I don't know where to start. A friend of Mary Sue's, which I'm trying to determine whether she's a friend or an enemy. But she gave me a lot of iris plants. I'll show you what she gave us. A bunch of iris. Probably over 50 of them. And right now, they're just in buckets of water at the moment. All through there. All these. And the ground right now, because we haven't had any rain in two or three weeks, the ground is just too hard to try to dig in. So he is cutting them down a little bit smaller. and going to just plant them in these pots for the moment, temporarily. Until we get some rain, then we can put them in the ground. Okay, now. Uh, I'm back in here now. Okay. Woo, let me move around. Move back a little bit. We got a fan in here going trying to stay cool. Uh, the reason I've clipped these off here is because they're floppy and uh, they get top heavy. So I cut these off when I plant them. That way they don't tip over. And uh, you've got to have some greenery for photosynthesis purposes. You want to show Miss Kitty? <laughs> she comes see what Dad's doing. Hey, Miss Kitty. She's storing my new book, also Adventures of Miss Kitty and her woodland friends. She's always out here in the garden with us. Okay. Uh, this is a temporary measure until hopefully we get some rain next week and the ground won't be so hard. It's kind of like concrete right now. So it's difficult to plant anything. So Dave, just keep in mind, this is a temporary measure. Just to keep them alive so they don't die while they're waiting to be planted in the ground. This will keep them alive quite a while. Quite a while. We got a lot of these buckets we save over time. They come in handy. You see, he's got a bunch of those buckets there full of water. And this is how we, we've had them so far on this water. But we need to get them in some dirt. So okay. He's clipping off the end, see, like you see said. See what I'm doing here? Uh-huh. The dried ones are kind of hard to cut. But the, the roots look good. Here. Look at that root. Mm -hmm. They all yeah. got good roots. Good root system on mm -hmm. All of these, I think they're about all bearded iris. They're all different, multiple colors. We won't really know until next year, but when my friend Stephanie gave them to us, she said they're all a lot of different colors. She's in the process of cleaning out and selling her mom's house. Her mom passed a few years ago, and her mom was quite a gardener. She had lots of iris and what else? Um, oh, what's that? Can't think of it. Like we got. My mind just went blank. Creeping flocks. Creeping flocks and azalea. She had lots of the old timey azalea bushes that were about eight, ten feet tall. They were way too big to try to dig up. But we took a few cuttings off of them to try to root later. So, these guys work cut out for a little while, trying to get these cut down smaller and put into some dirt. And hopefully we might have some rain sometime this week a little bit, maybe. That rain chances kind of fluctuate day to day. Bunch here. There's a bunch of them right here laid out. And hopefully we got enough bags of dirt for this. We got about three bags to do it. Maybe we'll get some more dirt later. But maybe not. We may have enough. I'll have to use, use my little scoop and get more of my scoop in my hand. Huh. Yeah. But the problem with that is, you don't get your hands dirty. <laughs> That's part of the fun. Uh, uh, it's no fun if you don't get dirty hands. Oh, that one left its root somewhere. Oh, it came off. It detached from the root. Yeah. She is stretched out over there supervising. She's got to make sure Dad does everything just right. That's about as close as she's gotten to that fan. She's not quite used to the noise it makes. And I have it on low at the moment. But as soon as I quit taping, I'm going to turn it back on high. Hello, Miss Kitty. 
What you doing down there? Uh huh. Have you seen your friend Mr. Skedaddles today? I saw him once run off. Who oh, Mr. Skedaddle is? Mr. Skedaddle is another cat. Looks very similar to Miss Kitty, but he's a little bit darker gray, and he's a little more skittish. He likes to come up and get food from us. We leave food for her on the front and back porch, and he'll come share the food with her. But so far, if we get, oh, uh, we come out the door, he'll start running off. He'll get maybe within 10 feet of us, and he'll run off. Or he'll just sit there and look at us. He won't get any closer to 10 feet so far. He's just a little more wild. But he does come up and share the food with her, and he That's hides in here. Dear girl, did you go? Well, right, Tammy, we'll get a little closer to us. Yeah. Mr. Skedaddle. That's why I named him Mr. Skedaddle, because every time you get too close, he skedaddles. And he's yeah. gone. Yeah. Oh, I put some dirt in here. I think I put things in a smaller thing. A little bit smaller pot? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll leave you to your work here. I'm going to go down and check the mail down at the mailbox. See what's uh, down there. Do not bring any bills back. Any bills. Just put them in the trash can, huh, down there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if I don't see them, I don't know them. <laughs> yeah, it's been so hot and dry lately. He hasn't had any chance to plant anything. We still have a can of there and a few other cans that need to be planted. But like I said, the ground's just too hard and dry right now to try to break break into. We have this funny looking little thing right here that a friend gave us. Do you remember what this was called? Oh, an arrowhead plant. Arrowhead plant. It's beautiful, but it's also very toxic and poisonous. We're going to plant it out there by the, in the creek, because it loves to be close to water. It's got pretty little white flowers on it, and the leaf is in the shape of an arrowhead. That's why it's called arrowhead plant. And it spreads pretty fast. If you put it by water, it will spread fast. So he's going to, right now it's been living pretty good in this dirt here. I have water every day. He's going to plant it down by the creek later. Yeah, we gotta say the iris first. They're a little more important. The iris are more, a little more tender. Anyway. They stay in that water too long, they'll probably rot, won't they? Uh, well, the root I'm afraid the roots may rot. Yeah, yeah, that's why we try and get them in dirt so the root doesn't rot. Well, there, I call this a root. It's actually a rhizome. Yeah, These yeah. are the roots. Hold it out a little more in front of you so I can see it better. Yeah. This is a rhizome. The roots come off of this. The rhizome needs to be really close to the surface and Maybe even a little bit above the surface of the ground. Uh -huh. Let's try to hold it out in the sun for a minute. I'm not. I'm seeing shade on my camera. It might be picking up, but I'm not positive if it's picking it up or not. Okay. I can't tell if I'll just, now, now I can see it better. On roots. Okay. Yeah. Okay. These are called spears. So that's how it spreads so fast. These do multiply nicely. Mm -hmm. Once you get them in the ground, they'll multiply like daylilies will. And they're a hardy plant, very hardy. Once they're planted, you don't you can almost ignore them. You don't have to do much to them. That's what I like about it. Uh huh. All you gotta do is set them and forget them. That's it. Set and forget. Well, goodbye, Miss Kitty, and we'll continue back tomorrow with something else, maybe. Everybody have a great day gardening. Oh, I might mention, please hit the like, subscribe, and share. There'll be links below to the other channels for the Claw Reflex. Cook with Mary Sue. Which this week I made a delicious recipe for everybody that's hot in the Delta or if it's hot wherever you are. Try my delicious strawberry cantaloupe homemade ice cream. Yes, I made homemade ice cream. It came out wonderful. You can substitute with any other type of fruit you want to, but it's an easy three-step process. You don't need an ice cream churner with it. Like I said, it's only three steps and you have delicious ice cream. Bye for now and happy gardening.